Oh my God, you speak Spanish? I took four years in high school, but I can't speak a word anymore. How do you keep all those verb tenses straight? I was fine until I got to like subjunctive. What is that anyway? Does that sound familiar? That's because you learned to memorize a language. You never acquired it. And that's our goal for our students in the World Language Program. We want students to acquire language that they can use. So the number one biggest difference from how you learned a language versus how your students will learn a language now is that we do not teach conjugations. Wait, what? You heard me correctly. We don't teach conjugations. We teach verbs as vocabulary words. Tango means have, tiene means has, and tenia means had. Just another vocabulary word. Our program is centered around what we call high frequency words, or sometimes the sweet 16. The sweet 16 are a list of the most common words you need to have a conversation in a language. We use these words for the entire duration of our program here. And then from there, we base the rest of our vocabulary around what our students are interested in because we know that students will learn better if they actually like what we're talking about. So if we have a class that's really into video games, we might teach some extra vocabulary related to video games. Here's an example. Carlos likes to play video games. He likes to play Among Us. He likes to play Fortnite. He likes to play lots of games, but he likes to play Minecraft the best. Did you notice how many times I said likes to play? Through repetition, this is where our students learn the language. Okay, but I have a question. Are you teaching grammar at all? Of course we are, but it's going to be based on what students notice. So if students ask us a question about masculine and feminine adjectives, then we'll answer it. It's just not going to be the focus of our whole lesson or a fill in the blank question on a test. Think about it. When your children were babies, how many times did you stand over them and say, mama, da da, before they actually said the word themselves? And then as time went on, they learned new words and they would point to something. They would say, wah, wah. And you knew that that meant water. And then it would become me water. It wasn't perfect, but you still knew what they meant. And eventually they progressed to being able to say, can I please have a glass of water? That's how we acquire language. And that's how we teach language here. So we are not grammar perfectionists. We just want our students to be able to communicate as best they can. But different from when you learned your first language, when you're learning a second language, you first listen, then you read, then you write, and then you speak. Speaking is the very last skill that is acquired. So for all of you that took four years in high school and can't speak a word, you never got to that stage. In our program, we want to celebrate any time a kid tries to communicate. So even if they say something wrong, we just go with it. So if they were to say something like, yo cansada, we could correct them and say, oh, tu estas cansada? Yo también estoy cansada. We want students to make mistakes because that's how they learn. Okay, but there's like a textbook, right? No, not really. Instead, we write stories together as a class based on what we've talked about that day, and then students read their own work. Then we also have readers that are written specifically for students learning a new language, and we do lots of reading, and both of those provide input for our students to continue learning language. That does sound really innovative, but how are you going to ensure that my eighth grader is prepared for whatever high school they choose to go to if the kids decide on the curriculum? That's a valid concern, but as the eighth grade Spanish teacher, I can assure you that your students will be more prepared than the average student by learning this method because they're acquiring the language, not memorizing it. And Emily and I have lots of experience preparing kids for high school placement tests. So in eighth grade, if we need to show them how to master test taking abilities, we've got that covered. So there you have it. There's a very brief explanation of how a comprehensible input classroom works and how our program is different from maybe the way you parents learned when you were students. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. And if you're really interested in language research, look up Stephen Krashen. He's the famous linguist that designed this whole process. It's scientifically based, just in case you were wondering. Have a great school year.